Number 43. Determine the number of moles and the mass required for each reaction in exercise 4.42. And then I have that question right here. And this, we're going to do letter A. So in this case, we have to find the number of moles and the mass of chlorine. And that's reacted uh, with 10.0 grams of sodium metal, which is Na, right? And we're going to produce sodium chloride, which is NaCl. Okay. So they gave me a lot of compounds here, right? Or molecules. We want to find out the amount of chlorine, aka Cl2, and it looks like it's being reacted with sodium to produce sodium chloride, NaCl. Now, before we do any math, we have to write a balanced equation, especially if you see that you're dealing with multiple compounds or molecules and they are reacting with each other and they're producing a product. Now we've done tons of problems like this with learning how to balance equations. So this one, I'm going to speed up a little bit because we already learned how to do this in the prior examples. If you guys are new here, you could go back to the, the previous questions in the playlist. If you guys are on this chapter's playlist to check out how to balance the equations, but let's see if you can uh, get the same equation as I got. So in this case, we have chlorine, Cl2, reacting with sodium. So they're going to be on the same side. So Cl2 plus sodium. And I'm going to produce, so yield, sodium chloride, which is NaCl. Now, before we even move on, we need to make sure that this is balanced. Yes, we wrote an equation, but you always got to make sure that you balanced it. So this is just going to be a quick review, right? It looks like I have two chlorines on my left-hand side, but I only have one chlorine. So I'm going to have to put a two in front of here. And then I have two sodiums. So I have to put a two here and I'm finally done with balancing. Okay. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Maybe I'll just put that over here. And that part's done for the equation. Now we actually have to do the math. So here's the new stuff. The thing that I always like to do is I like to find what they gave me. So they gave me a amount of 10 grams, right? 10.0 grams. And that's of the sodium metal. So wherever the sodium guy is, I just like to write underneath it that, okay, I'm dealing with 10.0 grams of this. And what did they want us to know? Or what are they asking, right? Well, they're asking for the number of moles and the mass of chlorine, Cl2. So I'm going to a completely different compound. The question is asking for information of chlorine, Cl2. They want us to know how many moles we have, and they want us to know the mass. And remember guys, mass is just grams. Okay. Now here is a little signal to know exactly what to do. If you do it this way, right? And you write your balanced equation and then you list what you have. And if you notice that you have information for one element or compound and you're asking to find another element or compound, right? In this case, we have that. We're going to be doing stoichiometry. Now stoichiometry, a lot of students get a little scared about it, but no worries. It's just a four step process. Actually, it's a three step process. Total could be more could be less, but usually I like to think of it as this. Now, let me just pull this down a little bit just so that we could see what's going on here. Now, usually stoichiometry spans from a gram amount on one side, right? Grams of something. And you basically, they're, they're pretty much going to ask you for grams of the other side, right? But you got to go through this whole process of going from grams of one compound to moles of the same compound. Then you transfer over to moles of the other compound and grams. So I like to keep saying grams to moles to moles to grams, grams to moles to moles to grams. The A's are one compound and the B's are the other ones. This is your starting material and this is your end. The starting material is always the amount that you have. And they gave you a gram, right? So we are starting here. So technically I would take my 10.0 grams of sodium, and I would first have to convert it into moles of sodium, right? And it's just sodium because it's just Na. 
And then from there, now I convert to the compound that I want. That's the B guy. So it would be moles of Cl2. And then from there, since they want both of them, I can get grams of Cl2. Okay, now let's actually do these steps. This is all going to be dimensional analysis. It's the easiest way to do it. And I got you guys, so don't worry about that. We're just gonna be doing ratios. So in this case, I have 10.0 grams of sodium, right? And actually, let me just put G, right? G stands for grams, right? So grams of sodium. And I don't want this unit anymore, right? I don't want grams of sodium. And when we want to convert into a different unit, all we do is we just multiply by some ratio, right? The unit that I don't want goes on the opposite side. So in this case, the grams of sodium goes on the bottom, right? Because I want it canceled. And always look to the next step to figure out what's gonna go on the top. So in this case, we want moles of sodium. So moles of sodium would be on the top. Do you see how the grams of sodium is going to cancel? And now I'm just left with this guy. But now the question is, what numbers go on the top or on the bottom? Well, it turns out when you're doing this little thing here of grams to moles to moles to grams, grams to moles is always your periodic table information, PT, periodic table. Anytime that you're going from a gram to a mole of the same element or compound, I just use the periodic table. So get your periodic tables out, guys. And remember, when you're using the periodic table, we've done tons of problems like this, right? It's always going to be one mole, one mole of whatever is on that periodic table. So in this case, it's one mole of sodium. And then I go to my periodic table and look and see what sodium is. And the mass number is 22.99 on mine. So that's the number that I put down for the grams. And now the units for grams will cancel out with grams. And I'm just left with the mole value. So the first part is done. Now I got to go to the next step. I have moles of Na, right? And that's what I got here. And I want to go to moles of the other compound, right? Moles of sodium to now moles of Cl2. So I do the same thing again. Don't worry about not calculating. We're going to save that to the end. So now I work with this top. I don't want moles of sodium anymore. So that goes on the opposite side. So mole of sodium on the bottom. And what do you want on the top? Moles of chlorine, Cl2. Okay, units are down, but now the question is, what are these values, right? Well, the first step was periodic table. What's the second step information? From a mole to a mole, this is the balanced equation, BE, balanced equation. These are your coefficients, the big numbers in the front of your balanced equation. That's all that they are, coefficients, the big numbers. So you're literally going to the, ba the balance equation and seeing what the coefficient of Cl2 is and what's the coefficient of sodium. Well, if I look back at my uh, balanced equation, there is no coefficient for Cl2, so that means that there's a secret one here. So I have one mole of chlorine, Cl2, for every, how many moles of sodium, guys? Ah, there's a two here. So the two is on the bottom. The one goes with the Cl2, the two goes with the sodium and the units will cancel. And now you're only left with moles of Cl2. Now, this was the first thing that we wanted to solve for, right? We wanted to solve for moles of Cl2. So I am going to stop here and find out that answer. Now, what you can do is you can do this all in one shot. Just know that anytime that you see a denominator, you divide, right? But it probably is better if we just multiply all the numerators, multiply all the denominators, and then do uh, the division. But I'm going to just do this in one shot, guys, right? 10 divided by 22.99. But now I got to divide again by 2 because 
the 2 is in the denominator, denominator divide. So I get 0 0.217, and that's moles of Cl2. I keep it as 3 sig figs because I have 3 sig figs in the beginning. So I got to keep the same sig figs if you guys are worrying about the sig figs. So here is one of the answers. So I have 0 0.217 moles of Cl2, and this part is done. Now we just got to find out the grams, right? Well, we did this step, and look at it now, right? I could take the moles of Cl2 and find out the grams of Cl2. So let's just do it. 0 0.217 moles of Cl2. It's a conversion factor, just like the other two. So multiply by that ratio. The unit that you don't want goes on the opposite side. So in this case, I don't want moles of Cl2 anymore. So that goes on the bottom. And what am I searching for? Oh, I'm searching for grams of Cl2. Now I go back to this idea where it's moles to grams of the same uh, element or compound. This is back to the periodic table. It's the same way in which we did this one, right? And if we're using the periodic table, remember, it's always one mole. So find out wherever the mole uh, unit is on your conversion factor and put a one there. The gram value is the grams on the periodic table. Now just be careful, it's Cl2. So you have two chlorines. So you have to do the mass of chlorine, 35.45, times two of them. And I get on my periodic table, I get 70.9. These units cancel. You are left with only the unit of grams, the grams of Cl2. So that works out perfectly. And now let's just do the math. So 0.217, hold on a minute, 0.217 times 70.9, rounding to three sig figs again. So 15.4. And that's grams of Cl2. And that, or those are your two answers. So guys, what do you think? Hope for this help. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. And I hope to see you in new lessons, all right? Keep studying hard. You guys got this. See you later. Bye-bye.